Today in Apple Motion, we are going to create a map animation with some really nice drawn lines. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you do not get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From here, we're just gonna select a motion project and you can leave your presets at whatever you typically like to work with. Today, I'll be working at 1080p at 30 frames per second. From there, we can go ahead and push Open. Once motion is open, go ahead and push Command I to import and locate the map that you want to work with. From there, we'll just push import in the bottom right hand corner. Now currently, if I go into my inspector and go to my properties and scale this up, you'll notice that it's very pixelated. That's because I have brought in a PDF file. Go ahead and jump into your media tab here, select your map, go to media, and then deselect fixed resolution. This will allow us to scale up our map without losing any resolution. Now that we have our map, go ahead and scale it up to roughly fill up your frame and find the position of where you want your drawn lines to be. I kind of want to follow along this road. From here, we are going to select the Bezier tool and then starting from the origin point of our path, I'm going to go ahead and click and just follow along this road here making the Bezier path follow as best as I possibly can. And you can click and drag to actually get those curves around the corners. Now that I've created the line to my final destination, I'm just gonna push enter. It's gonna make things look a little bit crazy, so jump on over into your shape and disable the fill. So now you should just have this bright red line. Let's go ahead and make this line look a little bit more hand-drawn. Finding the shape style, we can click on this icon, go down to traditional, and locate a shape style that you like. I happen to really like how this Sable 5 irregular looks. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to whatever my liking is. I happen to like how the yellow looks. After that, we can go ahead and bring down the width so it's a little bit thinner of a line, but now we've got this really nice line that looks very hand drawn. After that, if you're not happy with the roundness of your edges, you could actually drag up the roundness inside of your geometry slider here to get it looking even more natural. Now that we have our line, let's go ahead and animate it. Jumping up to our behaviors, we can go down to shape and select right on. This is going to auto animate our shape to right on following this line really nicely. Now currently it is set to a constant speed, so that line is never going to change its variation in how it is being drawn on. I happen to really like how changing it from constant over to natural looks, so it actually has a little bit more flow in certain portions of the line, so that is typically the one that I choose. Now I don't want this to take the entire duration of our project, I want it to end before our camera is finished, so let's go ahead and take it down to the 6 second mark by jumping over to 5. 29 and pushing O, that will trim it down to six seconds. Now that we have our line all set up, we need to create an object that follows this line. So I'm gonna grab a rectangle and get it to be roughly the scale that I want to follow along this line. So this is gonna kind of be our camera scale. After that, I'm going to disable the outline on this rectangle and I'm gonna rename it to be the framer. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and actually just disable the visibility on our framer. With the framer selected, we can go up to behaviors, basic motion, and then select motion path. Currently, it is set to open spline, so it will follow this red spline here in our project. Let's change it from open spline over to geometry, then we'll drag in our Bezier path that we have created. So now, if I play forward, you can actually see the outline edge of that framer following the yellow line. However, it's not doing it at the same speed as our yellow line because our yellow line writes on much faster because we shortened the write on animation. So to fix that, let's go ahead and come to the end where the yellow line should be finishing. We'll select the motion path layer here in our timeline and then push O to trim it down. So now that rectangle is going to be following at the same rate as our yellow line. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and add in a 3D camera that can track to this. So going up to our objects, we'll select add object and then we'll select camera. It's gonna ask if we wanna switch everything to 3D, go ahead and do just that. Now that we have this camera, let's go back up to behaviors. We'll go down to camera and select framing. With the framer selected, we can click and drag our framer object into the framing behavior. So now that we've done that, the camera is going to automatically animate to zoom in on that framing object we created. And you'll notice it's actually following the direction of our line. 
However, if I play it back, you'll notice it's also a little bit jagged in its movements, and I want to smooth some of those out, especially around those corners. So to do that, select your camera, go over to Properties, and locate the Position Parameter. We'll click on this down arrow, we'll select Add a Parameter Behavior, and select Average. The average parameter is going to take the average values of the position of the camera and make it so that it's a lot less jarring. It's going to actually smooth out those animations. So we have our window size. Currently it's set to 10. Let's go ahead and set that all the way up to 20. So if I push play, you'll notice that the camera motion is much smoother, especially around the corners. If you don't want the camera to actually start zoomed out and slowly zoom in, you can actually come over here to the left side and find the position transition. Go ahead and drag that all the way to zero and the camera will automatically be completely zoomed in on our object. It won't have any of that slight animation of zooming in. It's totally up to you what you want for your specific project, but for this one, I would like it already pre-zoomed in. So we now have this really nicely animated line drawing through the city streets. It's following the line perfectly and it saved us a ton of hassle of trying to hand animate this camera in 3D space. If we wanted to spice things up a little bit, we could add an end point where the animation should end. So let's go ahead, click on this down arrow and select the circle object. From there, we can click and drag to create a basic circle over the position of the end of our point. Currently, it's actually underneath our map because of where it lies in position here. So let's go ahead and find this Z value and change it from whatever it has currently set to one. So that will put it over the top of our map in 3D space. Now we want it to pop up just at the very end of the animation. So we'll come to wherever that is. Then we'll push I to set the endpoint. So now that won't pop up until we are at the very end. Now I want this circle to have a nice little endpoint animation as it pops in. So let's go on over to the left side and locate the scale value. Notice it's currently set to 100%. If we click on this down arrow, we'll select add a parameter behavior and then select overshoot. From here, we can find the start value. Right now, it's set to 0%. We want to actually negate that original 100% value that our circle was set to. So let's set that to negative 100% and that will completely zero out the scaling of our circle. If I push play now, you'll see how it very, very slowly pops into place. We want to drastically speed up that animation. So let's come forward just a few frames here. We'll select the overshoot parameter and then push O. That will trim down the overshoot parameter and really speed it up. So if I push play now, we have a much faster pop in of our circle. Now currently the circle looks absolutely terrible. So let's jump into the shape settings. We'll drop down the width. We could go ahead and disable the fill and we could even change the color over to that yellow value. We could also change the shape style if we wanted to over to traditional and then scroll down to that sable five irregular. And now it will look just like the hand drawn line that we created. So if I were to push play, we now have this really nice animation of this line going through these city streets. Then at the very end, it pops into place with this great looking circle. If this video was helpful to you, you might want to check out this video where I show you how to recreate a Lord of the Rings map animation inside of Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.